Have you been looking for banga soup recipe or banga stew recipe? I've got you covered in this particular video. My name is Ogom Series, a content creator based in Abuja. Today, I'll be showing you how to make banga soup, banga stew, or ofaku stew. Different people have different names that they call this particular recipe, and that is what I am going to show you today. For my side, which is Igbo, we call it ofaku stew. Please click on the subscribe button Click on the notification bell that's the bell that you see beside the subscribe button so that you always get notified whenever i post a new video and let's get right into the ingredients so this is apple this is what palm fruit looks like okay so all you have to do is to pour this inside a pot and you will start cooking when it gets soft or when it's ready i will definitely show you guys the difference right now if you pinch on this it is still hard Ew. If you pinch on this, this is still hard, but when it's soft, I'll definitely show you guys. So you're going to put, cook this in case you want this to get soft um, faster. When you put it on fire, add salt. It is going to help with the cooking process so that you don't cook for such a long time. And um, this is it. Whenever you go to the market, look out for apple that hasn't... Um, what's there? What's that? What's when I mean by your leberon is that, wait, let me give you guys an example. When you go to buy the apple, if you notice that the head here, how do I explain this thing now? This thing is not focusing. Mm -hmm. That this place now, this head is not black. That's how you will know that the apple is not spot or they haven't dropped it for such a long time. But as you can see, this one is still white. So which means it's still a fresh apple. So when you go to the market, look out for this head. So that it's not brown. When it's brown and looking white, you know that they have dropped it for such a long time. And sometimes they will mix the apple of old apple with the new apple. If you now finish cooking the apple, now mama no like the oil you will be tasting somehow. So that is what I want to explain. Cook this apple, and when it's done, I'll definitely show you guys. So remember, this is still a video on how to make banga soup or banga stew or ofaku stew, whichever one you call it. So, I just want to show you guys that our apple is done. Now, how to know if, yes, how to know how your apple is done is that when you press it, hold on, press the apple like this, it comes off easily. But if you press it and it's still hard, that means the apple is not done yet. So, as you can see, this is coming off easily and you'll be getting your mortar and you'll be pouring everything inside. That's our apple. So we we'll pour everything inside the mortar. Now, so we'll be pounding our apple right now. If you have bushy mist, use bushy mist. Me, I don't get bushy mist. Oh, so it's my mortar. And um, if we not cold, that is what I have. That is what I will be using. This was what I was trained with. So pound very well. so right now we are done with pounding our apple so you have to make sure that the apple comes off easily from the palm fruit at least you should be seeing this this is a um, pan kernel uh, so make sure that the apple comes off easily and be looking like this in that way you will know that the apple has come out because this is your banga extract this is your banga puree so there is no need for you boiling water because the apple is still hot. So all we are doing right now is that we are pouring cold water into it and we are using our hands. Our hands are clean. So we are pouring it into the pot. So we'll be squeezing the banga one after the other don't throw it out because you will still add water to squeeze it out that is what we are doing so when you finish removing the it's just like rinsing cloths when you rinse the first time you will rinse the second one 
But one thing with banga soup or ofako stew is that don't pour too much water so that the cooking process of the ofako will not be too long. That is the main process. As you can see, this water is still something like, it's still thick. So whenever you're mixing, do set by set so that you don't pour too much water. So we are removing the banga. Watch the process. So get a sieve and put into a pot that you'll be using to cook it. So like this one here, we're going to leave it here for it to drain out the water well. And we are going to do another set as you can see here. We pour into the pot, pour water until the whole banga extract is inside here. Then we can pour little water to rinse it again. That is the whole process that you are going to be watching right now. And I hope you are understanding or getting it. So we are pouring another set of water into the banga. Remember, minimize the amount of water that you are adding so that your banga extract is not too watery. So that the cooking process will not be too long too. That is what So we are done with the whole process of the squeezing. So let me show you guys. Whenever you finish squeezing your banga extract, make sure that there is no water coming out of it again. So you just make sure that you squeeze out the whole water. So that it will be as dry as a chaff from your fruits. Um, from your fruits, uh, when you finish squeezing your fruits, how dry the chaff is, that is how your banga extract should be looking like when you're done. So squeeze out the whole water from it and then you can trash it because you have finished squeezing the water. So this is what you are seeing here. So this is our banga extract, also known as our banga puree. This is how it looks, okay? Before you can start the cooking process, when it's thick, you can sell if you want to sell. But right now, this is our banga extract. Going to cook it down before you can start adding your ingredients, your spices and the rest of them. So, welcome back guys. So, the other ingredients that we need for our banga are this, okay? This is our crayfish, our powdered crayfish. This is our well-cut onions. This is our seasoning cubes i'm using no don't worry i'll pick that up now this is our banga stick pay attention to these ingredients that i'm showing you this is our banga stick this is our buffalo that is the name i know they call this now how how to use this is that you have to remove the back you are not using the seed just the back is what you're using and this is our ehuru seed I've shown you guys several of this on the channel. This is our Ehuru. It is also needed. Then this one is our Atafiko. Oh, I hope I'm pronouncing these names well. I'll be putting the names on the screen. So this is our Tafi, Tafiko or something. I know it as a Rima, but I've seen that the name is also Tafiko. I'll be leaving the name on the screen. And this is our um, Ogilo Bay. Now, for this particular one, I don't really know. I can't remember the name right now, but I'll be putting it on the screen. It is also needed. This so, is our banga. It has been cooking for like 10 minutes now. So all I have to do is to be checking it from time to time. And whenever you're cooking your banga, make sure that you open up the cover of the pot a little so that the once it foams up, it goes down. If you cover the pot when you're cooking your banga, if it foams and the cover of the pot is covered very well it is going to drop um, by the side of your pot and into your gas so that is what is going on so right now we have our mortar here and i'll be adding our <sighs> ingredients in okay our what's it called again our ehuru goes in I'm going to be pounding one after the other so that I will have a very powdered, powdered vibes. So that everything will pound away. Anyone wait for pick a more. So that. So right now I will be going with our um, Erima. I call it Erima anyway. And then I'll be opening up this one. To just show you guys how it is. Oh, this one doesn't even need to be pounded. So I don't know if you can see it. I'll just pour it like that. So it will be here. 
that is in, I'll be breaking this. This our wafilo. I'll be breaking it and I will show you the one that you are supposed to use for your banga. So here is our bafilo. I just remove, I heat it and this will come off easily. Look at the seed and look at the back. So what I want to do is that I want to be adding it into what I'm pounding, but I don't want to use everything because I always like my um, banga spice to be very clean. I don't like it being jam-packed because if you put too much spices, it's going to make your banga to be bitter anyway. So I only add a little of that. And I'll be storing this one back. That is what I am going to do. Back here is our banga spice. Oh, no. Anyway, here is our banga spice and everything is right in here. Now, what I want to do right now, moving to that side, you people are going to be moving with me, okay? I have my... If you don't have a blender, if you can get this um, hand shredder or hand grinder, it will be of a huge help for you in your kitchen. So this is a hand grinder. I have my yellow pepper in here. Hold on. Let me reduce it and show you guys. So I have my yellow pepper in here. I have my crayfish and my onions. I don't know if you can see that. That is what I have here. And I poured, I rinsed the mortar that I used in um, pounding the spices. I poured a little bit of water, as you can see here. Now I am going to be shredding this particular thing. If you have a blender, please make use of a blender. For me, I don't have a blender, okay? So that is what I am going to be doing. Shred everything. So that you can start adding your spices into your banga. Because very soon it will start getting thick. So welcome back. Now, one thing with our banga is that you should always remove the top of your banga. I don't know if you can see this banga very well. These things that you're seeing by the side. You have to remove them from your banga whenever you are cooking it. Look at it. Remove it and um, pour it out. There is no need for you using it for anything. So that is what I am doing right now. I am going to remove it from the top of my banga. Look at it. After removing it, that is when you can start adding your other ingredients. We'll be going in with our blended um, yellow pepper, onions, and crayfish. I'll be adding it in into your banga mix. I will also be adding our banga spice that I blended. Add everything in. I will still add more veggie, more crayfish, because it was just a little crayfish that I used in um, blending it. So mix it together. Right now, we'll be adding our banga stick so that everything will start smiling together. Add it in. Mm, just drop it. And then, I'll be adding more crayfish. Add as the spirit leads. Okay? So, it is time for us to go in with our other spices so that everything will simmer into... I want to roast our ogilope right now this is what we call ogilope some people call um i think is iru in yoruba but we we call it ogilope how i roast it is that i'm going to put it at the tip of my knife and put it underneath my gas is it underneath under the cooking cooking pot so that it will just roast for some time you pound it and add it in that is the only thing remaining for here i am going to be going in with our seasoning cubes so our seasoning cubes goes in I'm using two, depending on the amount of um, stew that you are making. Away. So we're going in with our salt. My son is helping me out. Add, add. You haven't brought out. Eh, hey, it's okay. It's enough. Right, come out. So here is our ogilope. You can see this smoke that is coming out is the scent of this ogilope. That is why it's good for you to always roast it before you add it to your to your stew. 
washing the dry fish that I'll be using. Some people use dry fish, some people use stock fish, some people use um, periwinkle, some people use snail. You can use any any protein of choice to make your ofaku. So I am making use of dry fish. Make sure that whenever you're washing your dry fish, you pour hot water first. Allow it to sit before you can pour cold water to start removing the bone. Right now, I have done just that. Now, one thing I also want to know is that for me, a way, I don't really like this, but I hear that it gives your meal a very nice scent, okay? So I'll be adding everything in, but just make sure that you remove the bone from your fish. May person no go choco. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. so i'll be going in with our meat i am making use of goat meat use any protein of choice so that everything will start simmering inside the meat and also some people actually cook their meat inside the banga once it starts cooking but me i've already parboiled my mine so i'll be adding it in so that everything will simmer inside well at this junction you can equally add your stock fish if you're using local local that is what we call stock fish so i'm making use of goat meat and i am also making use of towel meat and our farm and beef okay and then i'll be adding a little bit of the meat water uh -huh, that's enough and then you cover to boil where well, well. so here is our apple i'll be going in with our dry fish okay so that everything will see my inside. I always love my dry fish to be crunchy in my in my ofaku or even any soup that I'm making. Then for our vegetable of choice, because our ofaku is almost ready, your ofaku doesn't need to be very, very thick. Mm -hmm. So I'll be making use of ogo and nchiang. Our this is what is called nchiang. This is Ogo. I would have shown you guys how Ogo looks, but if you go to market, tell them to give you Ogo. So this one, we've washed and cut. I'll be adding it in. So I'll cut my Nchiao, more of Nchiao, or you can just make it equal so that you will have enough veggies. So I'll be adding the Nchiao. I'll be going in with our Nchiao. Add it in. No vegetable is too much for a particular meal because we need vegetable in our lives. Mm? Once you add it in, mix everything. Ouch! Mix it thoroughly. Okay? You see, need a splash like stew. So once you mix it, allow everything to simmer in well. Adjust your seasoning, adjust your salt, adjust your pepper, adjust your onions, any other thing that you want to add just add into this stew and then you put it down so i'll be allowing this to still cook for some time then i'll be showing you guys when we are done so welcome back guys i want to be dishing out our banga as you can see here here is our banga so all you have to do is to remove this banga stick wash it for another cooking so i'll be adding our banga inside here can see the oil that is topping this our banga this one shows that nka wa kwojuku na beta banga be this one so add your banga serve with your hot rice eat with them um, stash anyone you want to eat with it let me add the fish so like this now your banga is ready lele banga this one enter where well, where well. so there <laughs> so this is how to make banga stew or how to make ofaku or how to make banga soup however you want to call it i hope you enjoyed this particular video please give a huge and massive thumbs up like subscribe turn on the bell notification and i will definitely see you guys in my next video